Yes, 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 indeed. This is Touchline Karibuli Sana into our sec second segment of the interview. And of course, I'm speaking to Moses Lahima, formerly of uh, Kibra United, as well as, as, well as uh, Kibera Blacksters on his journey. He also had a stint in Europe. Karibu Sana, Moses, onto the Touchline. Yes, and uh, basically we have to begin where it all began, and that was at... Um, LXLG, right? Yeah. That's where you began your, your, your footballing career that, you know, hasn't uh, clocked a decade yet, so which means you're still in the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so how did it, I mean, are you turning out for LXLG, how has it been for you? It's been amazing. Mm -hmm. I've met uh, a lot of characters called Academy. Mm -hmm. So it's an academy. Uh, so basically, ni kids uh, from under nine to senior team. Mm -hmm. So I've met, I've actually learned a lot with academy. Mm -hmm. Now we've had quality coaches, uh, uh, so mm -hmm. I've learned a lot from the uh, starting of the process. Mm -hmm. How is it, how was it important that you began here? Uh, how is it important? Mm -hmm. Because my brother uh, started the academy, mm -hmm. so I trust him fully. Mm -hmm. He's my brother, he's my agent, mm -hmm. my mentor. Mm -hmm. So it was important for me I work with him. He also played uh, football. Mm -hmm. He's an ex-footballer. Mm -hmm. He played for Superpaka, Kibera Celtics, mm -hmm. and he's one of my ad idols. Mm -hmm. What's yeah. his name? Julio Diambo. Mm -hmm. John Odiambo. Julio. Julio. Julio Odiambo. Nice one. Uh -huh. And so from, uh, from LXLG, you left and uh, you got signed by Kibra United. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the, I, the first season I had with Kibra United was in, I think, 2021. 20, mm -hmm. uh, the first season. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, went for, I went to Europe first. After LXLG, you went to Europe. Yeah, immediately. Your, yes. Your experiences in Europe. But that's when you signed for... Ash Graben. Yeah, USB yes. Ash Graben mm -hmm. in, in Europe, in Austria. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a Division 4 team. Mm -hmm. I signed in after Corona, that's in 2021, mm -hmm. after Academy, and it was amazing. How was the experiences like, you know, transitioning uh, from, from Kenya now, looking at, you, you, you're knocking the door of your, your, your dreams now? Yeah, at first it was hard. Uh, everything is different there. You're moving from... Uh, different weather to another one, different people, different types of food. Mm -hmm. uh, everything is different. So at first it was hard to cope with. I complained a lot. <laughs> uh, but uh, um, I managed. Mm -hmm. After three months, I was OK with some of the things. Mm -hmm. And it went well for mm -hmm. the first mm -hmm. half season. Mm -hmm. well, what maybe some of the key things that help you adjust quickly? Uh, my mentors. My mentors, my parents, they talk, they talk to me every day mm -hmm. of my uh, journey. Mm -hmm. uh, so they calmed me down. I used to complain. I used to this and this. The weather, it's cold mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so at at Ash, Ash Graben, um, what kind of um, did they just did? You, how did you break into the team? Uh, in the first, I think. Three to four weeks, mm -hmm. I wasn't in the main team. Mm -hmm. I was in the uh, 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 under 23. Mm -hmm. That's like probation. Mm -hmm. So like they watch you. So I played uh, about five to seven games mm -hmm. every every weekend mm -hmm. for the under 23. And the main team coach said I should sign for the main team immediately because mm -hmm. I was good. Mm -hmm. I was too good for the under 23. Uh -huh. So uh, he gave me a chance in the senior team. Uh -huh. That's where it started. Uh -huh. And now, and you stayed there for how long? Uh, the first time I stayed for six months. Mm -hmm. I did half a season, six mm -hmm. months is mm -hmm. almost half a season. Mm -hmm. So the first half season was amazing, I'd say. Mm -hmm. well, what, how would you talk, how, what would you say about the like the level of, uh, you know, the kind of mental strength one has to be in when, you know, when you're making such moves, you're trying to, you know, make, make, make a career abroad. Uh, it's, you have to be strong. Mm -hmm. uh, I've told this to a lot of people who ask me about Europe and how it, how it is. I tell them you have to be like super, super strong because mm -hmm. after two weeks, everyone wants to come back because 
you, you come from uh, sunny weather, you go there, it's snowy, mm -hmm. it's raining every day, you mm -hmm. can't play because you're not used to it, different type of food, mm -hmm. and most people can't adjust to the food, to the people, the language barrier. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, that's a major uh, factor. Mm -hmm. The language barrier. You how, don't how do players navigate that? Uh, Especially when you have to receive instructions. You just have to. <laughs> <laughs> you just Say universal it. language. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, immediately, I, 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 before I went there, I had like a three months uh, learning of Deutsch, German. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I, was, I, I had basics. Mm -hmm. For me, I had basics, so it wasn't that hard. Mm -hmm. And I continued with lesson lessons when I was there. Mm -hmm. So it was okay for me because mm -hmm. you just need basics for instructions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how, how did your stints uh, make you, maybe at this particular club, make you a better midfielder? Uh, the level of football there is very different from ours in Kenya. It's uh, upgraded, I'd say. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you play with, uh, I've played with when I was in Division Four, I played with people who played, who once played in the top uh, elite teams mm -hmm. in the in their country. Mm -hmm. So uh, you really learn a lot. Mm -hmm. They talk to you. They tell you about uh, their style of play. Mm -hmm. You get idols there, of course, in the team. You get players to watch, mm -hmm. players to hang out with. Mm -hmm. So it really improves you uh, both both in the field and <coughs> off the field. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and I know moving uh, moving forward now, you know, you had also stints at Kibra United and yeah. and Kibra Blacksters, you know. Yeah. This, how has it? Uh, you, you how what what were these moves meant to to do? Uh, at Kibera United, mm -hmm. first I, I was in Kibera United before mm -hmm. Kibera Black mm -hmm. Blacksters. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I uh, the coach that was there mm -hmm. at that time was a friend of mine. Mm -hmm basically one of the uh, CEOs of LXLG also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he was a friend of mine, so everything worked well. I learned a lot mm -hmm. in the club. Mm -hmm. It's a community club, mm -hmm. so the football there is different. You play for something else. Uh -huh. yeah. I mean, and, and that something else is the badge. It's the badge, yeah. Play uh -huh. for the badge. Uh -huh. I, I used to play for my coach, I don't lie. Yeah. You 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 you'll I you'll just die for him. Die for yeah. yeah. He's uh, a friend of mine, a mentor. So. Uh -huh. I mean, how when you say a friend, maybe how how crucial is, is the friendship help you be, you know, uh, up to this point? Uh, he started mentoring me. Uh, he he he's one of the people who realized me mm -hmm. when I was like so so young. Mm -hmm. I was almost nine, mm -hmm. ten. Mm -hmm. I used to go to uh, this Kibra Celtic was one of the teams in the National Super League mm -hmm. that time. Mm -hmm. My brother was uh, pl uh, played there, and uh, the coach at Kibra United also played there. Mm -hmm. So I went to watch them every every game I used to go. Mm -hmm. So they realized me at, at such a young age and mm -hmm. started grooming me mm -hmm. slowly by slowly. Mm -hmm. And uh, as soon as they started the LSLG Academy, mm -hmm. I was inducted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, and maybe uh, we can talk about playing for the badge. How important is it for a player to realize that you need to play for the badge? Uh, it needs a realization and maybe you have to have a certain relationship with the team that's beyond football. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe your father played there. Maybe it's your community. It's, your, it's where you live. That's the village where mm -hmm. the team come from mm -hmm. the, where the team comes from mm -hmm. so yeah that's basically it yes so the next move what are you eyeing um i'm eyeing to like play in the nsl maybe once again uh -huh. maybe better uh -huh. and maybe in the premier league uh -huh. not anything less uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. and i mean uh, looking at uh, your journey maybe going uh, going back again at the transfer window when it opens yeah mm -hmm. yeah uh, when the transfer windows my agents are my agents are overworking they are, they'll find something for me something good mm -hmm. you know I trust them mm -hmm. so uh, as I said earlier mm -hmm. I'll, I think I'll play in the Premier League mm -hmm. NSL or outside the country mm -hmm. yeah. now what kind of qualities do you think players who 
majorly seek, you know, uh, seek careers abroad. What kind of do you think the, the outside world is looking for? First of all, you have to have talent. You have to, your talent must be enough. Um, and then accompanied by uh, hard work. You have to strive, you have to uh, have strong mentality. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you think that uh, maybe uh, elsewhere, I know players have um, a better start, you know, like, they, they, they begin, they have an ad advantage of, of some sort. Do you think that shows when, when players especially now move to, to such places from here? Yeah, uh, uh, some people have been groomed better than others. That's, that's the truth. Mm -hmm. So they, they will get bigger opportunities, maybe more opportunities in uh, abroad or just bigger clubs. So that's just mm -hmm. the truth of the game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. And so r right now, returning. So when you when you returned, you did not sign for any club. No, I decided to uh, take a rest. Mm -hmm. I didn't quit. I decided to. Were uh, they saying you quit? Yeah, yeah, people said I quit, but I told them it's just a normal break. Mm -hmm. Most footballers do it. If you uh, if you're keen, most footballers do it because it this this sport is. Uh, sometimes devastating, you trying this, that, uh, sometimes you're frustrated about this and that because you also have a uh, life beyond football, you have studies, you have family, so it's a lot. So sometimes when everything is just happening, you take a break and that's what I did. Mm -hmm. how, how, how did you like? How did you use those moments to, to, to come up to come up again? Yeah, I, I just needed a break to think about uh, decisions and what I should do to improve myself mm -hmm. as a person, first mm -hmm. of all, mm -hmm. and also as a player. Mm -hmm. So at 23, it, that was too early for people to say you had hung your boots. Yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. it's crazy. I I I. I didn't write anywhere I hung my boots. I just didn't sign for any club mm -hmm. for the last mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. half a season. Mm -hmm. So there was rumors I quit. Mm -hmm. And then people uh, find me in mm -hmm. They say, ah, no, you don't play football anymore. Mm -hmm. You've disappointed uh, a lot of people. No. Just. Yeah. Yeah, and also maybe your moves to 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 Europe and coming back. Yeah, they yeah. they expect a lot of a lot from me. Mm -hmm. So because how do you I handle the pressure? I've I've just learned to uh, to to listen to them and just tell them it's this and this. It is because not everyone goes to Europe. Mm -hmm. Not everyone gets a chance. It's only a few people who mm -hmm. get a chance mm -hmm. to go to Europe. Mm -hmm. It's not because of uh, anything, mm -hmm. of favor, or mm -hmm. it's just opportunities, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. when you go to Europe and you're from, let's say, a slum, a ghetto, mm -hmm. people have more expectations from you. Mm -hmm. And uh, such thing that I did, I didn't sign f uh, anywhere. Mm -hmm. It, it uh, got the almost uh, half of the community devastated because they were, they were like, uh, how can you go to Europe and you are young and then you hang your boots? Mm -hmm. It doesn't even make sense. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and and, uh, and then maybe players from uh, places where you come from are, are like cut from a different cloth, right? What kind of the, the, the maybe experiences and how they shape them, uh, how they shape you? Uh, I've, I'm from Kibera, mm -hmm. Slam, so we have a lot of talent there. There is too much talent, mm -hmm. especially uh, in football. Everyone mm -hmm. plays football. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, indeed. And everyone, everyone is talented. Mm -hmm. So uh, you learn from different people. You have people who you look at. Mm -hmm. uh, you have friends, mm -hmm. uh, people who you hang out with. Mm -hmm. So they influence uh, a lot in you, mm -hmm. especially Mimi. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yes. And uh, in, your, in your position, who is your role model in the attacking midfield role? Uh, generally. Yes. <laughs> it's, uh, 
it's 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 tough. <laughs> I'd say I'd say uh, uh maybe Kevin De Bruyne. Uh -huh. Kevin De Bruyne, yeah. right? And also we hope uh to see you, you know, going up and yeah, up, earning call ups, thank national call ups, yes, you yeah. know, and also featuring for the top tier teams yeah. in the league, right? Yeah. So you, you'll be going back, to, you'll be turning out for Kibera Blacksters yeah. this in the forthcoming window. Yeah. Okay, all the best. Been speaking to Moses Lahima, formerly turned out for Kibera United as well as Kibera Blacksters, and also had a stint uh, with. Ash Graben, that's in Austria, right, on his career, 23 year old attacking midfielder. Thank you so much, okay. Moses, for gracing Touchline, and we wish you all the best. Up next is the Fan Zone with Tyrus.